Now, if you were alive in the 1960s, you will never forget November 22nd, 1963. That was the day that Walter Cronkite, he confirmed the unthinkable. John F. Kennedy was dead. The 50th anniversary of his death is upon us, and we will talk about it this morning with journalist Mark Howell. Mark, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mark, it is a pleasure to have you here this morning. Now, do you remember that day, November 22nd, 1963? Oh, I sure do. Anybody who's 60 or over <laughs> will certainly remember that day. I was, in, uh, I was a teenager in England at the time. My sister called up the family home where I was living, and uh, I, I conveyed the news to my father. My father said something that I felt always was a bit inappropriate. The king is dead. God save the king. It's so British. <laughs> the fact is that ever since that time, people have never really believed it. Uh, even though they saw it live, uh, they saw Mr. Cronkite live reporting it, and they saw there's a Bruder film within months uh, or years at the most, and they've all seen it, the whole world has seen it, but so many of us, perhaps in fact a majority of, of Americans, don't believe it was a lone nut that did it. Mm -hmm. and, and why don't we believe that, Mark? I think that it's because the news was so terrible that we don't really take it in. It's like 9-11. The weather was too perfect on 9-11. It was altogether too much. And so now we have a large contingent of people who really do, do doubt the official record of what happened there. It's a strange thing. If we haven't seen it, like what the Borgias got up to in the Renaissance, we believe it all. But if we see it even live, we have this tendency to see something else in it. It's a strange thing. It's a perceptual phenomenon. Mm -hmm. it, it is a very strange thing, mm -hmm. and obviously there's so much controversy still to this day around it. Mark, you've done a lot of research on this topic. In fact, you've found some key connections to the assassination. Well, certainly. We found um, some very important keys connections. Um, about 10 years ago, an investigative colleague of mine, Tim Gratz, got in touch with me and said that he just read a book that claimed that uh, Harvey Oswald, the alleged assassin and, and uh, the late assassin, and uh, Jack Ruby had once been seen together in, uh, in uh, the, the airport here. It was the international airport at the time. Now, uh, that's an, an amazing allegation, but we did get in touch with the widow of the man who ran the airport, Mr. Feraldo, and I'll never forget Norma Feraldo uh, entertaining us in her home and telling us what a terrible situation it had all been for her. Yes, he did see those two. He insists to his dying day that he saw them together. And if they are, were together, then there is a conspiracy, Ruby being the person who shot Ros Oswald. And um, he, she also told us that he was beaten up in Cuba because he was, when he was there, knocking on doors and talking to people. So we had to ask her. Uh, Norma, was your husband uh, a member of the CIA? And she said, uh, her son was sitting next to her, his grown son, and she said, you'll have to leave now. So we did leave, and she called us later, and he said, well, he was a member of a number of groups. So that's where the conspiracy for us started. And beyond that, we found, of course, the obvious ones, which was the no-name keys people, the no-name key um, contingent. Uh, who were part of an a, a anti-Castro group that was working for the government. Um, in fact, one of them, Jerry Hemming, who died quite recently, he's the only man I personally have met who insists that he actually was in Dealey Plaza on that day with a rifle. He actually also was a, um, an advisor to Oliver Stone, who um, made a movie, JFK, a very controversial one, and, and a f couple of other people from No Name, all three of whom were actual killers. So Oliver Stone was hiring some, um, some pretty hot insiders. Uh, we've covered a lot of that in our, in our uh, coverage over the years. We've also um, dug up the strange story of Gilberto Perez, who um, lived in Key West, married a girl here, and was part of a trial assassination that was about to take place in Tampa. Uh, also, we've uncovered that up in um, Isla Morada, where Founders Park now is, there was a meeting between a man called William King Harvey, who was the, a very big wig in the CIA, 
and Johnny Rosselli, who is strongly uh, believed to have been part of the mafia conspiracy um, uh, to kill Kennedy. Uh, was there a conspiracy and who was behind it? Uh, I'll have to say that Tom Hambright, the, the, um, our local historian of great merit, believes this. He says that it must have been the Mafia. He strongly does believe that it was not a lone nut who did the impossible that day. So given that something else happened, he believes it was orchestrated by the Mafia because the CIA and other groups were simply incapable of keeping a secret. Whereas the Mafia, that's all they do, and successfully so, over the decades. So bottom line, who knows, but, um, and we still don't know, but there are some very hair-raising stories about Trafficante, the uh, mob leader in Tampa, and some confessions he made. There's some hair-raising confessions continuing to be made. Uh, maybe we will find out soon. Is there going to be a book over this, Mark? Do you think one day? Uh, my, my colleague, uh, Tim Gratz, is working on a book right now and is, 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 uh, hopes to get it out as soon as possible. I must say, when we started this investigation of our own, we both of us believed that by the 50th anniversary, there would be a huge audience for a movie. And what we need to do is make a movie. But we never got to make a movie. And guess what? Nobody else is making a movie. In fact, we, our, uh, our little uh, movie would have sailed through to great glory and money, but it didn't happen. Uh, if Tim's book's ha book happens, I wish him luck. Um, it's a great story to tell. It absolutely. It's a great story that will continue to find more information out each and every day, I think. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on this morning, Mark. Thank you, Jenna. There's more to come this morning. Stay with me. <laughs>